Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on all things related to narcissism, narcissistic relationships, and just toxic situations in general. My hope is that this content helps you better learn how to navigate and understand these relationships so you can heal from them if you're in them or avoid them in the first place. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. would love to have you join this community. And always thank you for your comments and your messages because this is where a lot of the thinking comes on what people are looking for from this channel. So we can, at the best degree possible, tailor what we put on this channel to what people are asking about. And that's what today's video is about. This one comes from parents who say, I really feel bad for what happened to my children because my co-parent is really narcissistic and it's taken a toll on them. And so let's, let's take this question on because it's one that's come in from a lot of people. It's not just what can I do, but it's, I really feel bad. So let's, let's take this one on. So again, I've so often heard the question, the most consistent question that I often get when it comes to co-parenting with a narcissist and I get from parents is, how do I protect my child from their narcissistic parent or protect my child from the fallout of having a narcissistic parent? And this is a question, whether the parents are still married or divorced, whether they're co-parenting in the same house or co-parenting across town or across the country. The answer isn't always satisfying. The fact is there is only so much you can do, more than you think, but only so much you can do. As a parent, you have to be heavy with the empathy, never gaslight your children, don't triangulate, and hard as it is, do not speak badly about the other parent, definitely not in the children's presence, never weaponize your children, but ultimately, whatever you do, having an antagonistic parent, it does take a toll on a child, especially the day in and day out. But that said, having one solid parent who is present can be a major offset to the difficult parent and really give a child the secure attachment, empathy, compassion, and the mirroring that they need. I have to say that children who have that, who have a solid parent, despite having a narcissistic parent, Yes, they're probably still going to be a little plagued by anxiety and that not good enough itis that happens, but still have a solid sense of themselves and do just fine in life. And in fact, children from these families can often have a more realistic view of the world and human relationships, but nothing you can do about it. There is some toll there. Now, all of that said, the issue that comes up for parents beyond that question is, I feel terrible for what happened to my children because of this relationship. I feel awful that they had to deal with a gaslighting parent or our toxic divorce or their other parents' inconsistency or unavailability or manipulation. And the parents will often go on to blame themselves for choosing a lousy partner or not understanding narcissism sufficiently initially in the relationship or before they had children or not adequately recognizing the impacts on their children or their children having had to endure the difficulties of having to spend some solo time with their narcissistic parent without the other parent there to sort of protect them because of the custody arrangement and recognizing that when they come home from that more difficult parent's home, you can see that it has taken a toll on them. All of this is very, very difficult on parents who feel bad for what this has done to their kids. And then there is sitting with that terrible feeling of, I did this to my children. There's no amount of reassurance I or anyone else can give that helps parents. It's sort of, it falls under something that we can call a moral injury, that you feel you did a bad thing to someone, your kids in this case, even if it was not intended to, and have to live with that sense of sort of badness in yourself. But the difference is that you didn't really do anything bad. We live in a world where nobody is taught about narcissism and antagonism and gaslighting and all of the other toxic dynamics in high school or at an age where it can really help all of us be better gatekeepers for who we let into our lives. And we also do not do a good job of helping emerging adolescents and adults actually feel good with themselves. The gauntlet of always being told that you need to be more and all the social comparison we've always engaged with. 
And all the stuff that happens in the world also does a number on young people's heads as it always has generation over generation at exactly the time that they're starting to date. And the fact is dating from a place of self devaluation is a recipe for disaster. And yet many people do it, right? So if folks were taught what toxic people and relationships really are and that all of us deserve better, then many more of us would have made far better relationship choices. But we aren't, and we didn't, and here we are, right? You didn't set out to choose a toxic co-parent for your children. It happened. The world enables these patterns. So even when your instincts may have told you like, well, this relationship doesn't feel cool, the world told you to stick it out. Yes, we do need to take responsibility for our choices, but none of this is easy. It's understandable that you would feel bad about this. Most parents just want to do right by their children to keep them safe. And we would always regret doing anything that would harm our children. We strap them into car seats and we make sure that they eat well and we read to them and we do our best to keep them safe from the dangers of the world. Most of us try to do that at least. So when we feel responsible for being the ones who could not protect our children from the harms of an invalidating parent, we take little solace in always remembering, oh, I don't know, we always put on the sunscreen and we always give help with homework, but we inst- get lost in how much hurt they experience. It's just not enough to remember the sunscreen, right? Keep in mind too, one of the tolls on children is watching the healthy parents suffer. They see their healthier parent being gaslighted. We, they see the invalidation, the dismissiveness. And if your children sense you are their safe space, it is painful and confusing for them. Your ability to stay steady, to be there for them, and if you do leave, to show them your strength, even on the days you feel like you don't have much of it, it teaches them tons about self-respect. If you do stay in the relationship, your ability to be there for them and show them your strength, again, even on the days you don't feel like you have much of it, teaches them that this relationship didn't break you. Those lessons are more important than you think. But here is the hard truth. You are not the parent who's invalidating them. You are not the parent who's gaslighting them. You're not the one who's criticizing them, ignoring them, or using them as a prop. The tyranny of narcissistic abuse is that we blame ourselves for the narcissistic person's behavior. You aren't responsible. It's painful to witness it, but you're not responsible for that behavior. And most of us didn't always have the skills to be as discerning as we should have been around co-parents, especially if we grew up in narcissistic family systems. So regretting what this did to your children becomes the fallout, further fallout of your own self-devaluation of feeling like you couldn't choose a good partner, of feeling that there was no right for you to expect better from a partner, and then having to live with another generation of cycles and self-blame for harm to your children. Narcissistic abuse runs deep in families, and it often runs through our life histories. Donald Winnicott was an object relations theorist in the area of psychoanalysis, and he talked about the good enough parent. None of us are close to perfect, least of all in our parenting. We just need to get it right enough, enough of the time, and trust that our failures are actually where our children have to learn a little on their own to cope and soothe themselves. Having a narcissistic co-parent makes this harder, but it can also be useful to shift the lens away from this idea of, I harmed my child by having them have this parent, and rather see it as, I'm there for my child, and helping my child see their light and goodness despite what's happening to us. I have heard countless stories of people who had narcissistic parents and these folks, despite their parents, are often some of the most extraordinary, loving, compassionate, wise, and just badass people I have had the pleasure of knowing. Yes, this will take a toll on your children and yes, it is hard to witness, 
but you do your best despite the conditions. And it's amazing to see that you, the impact this can have on your children. You're just doing your best. And the fact is almost all children have something that they bear. It's called the human experience. And one last way you can contextualize it is this, because we can often get ourselves caught in these thought loops of, well, if I had been with someone different and had my kids with someone different, then da, 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 this would be different. The kids you've got, those kids you love, they came of you and this other person, narcissist or not. It's a, it's a bit, again, it's, it's a bit of a pointless exercise because it would be different kids if you had them with different, someone else. And when you look at those faces, you're like, nah, this is the kid I want. It came from that person. And sometimes I can help infuse you with some self-compassion saying the world needed your child just as they are. And yes, this was a hard pass, but you didn't do this to your kids. This combination is what yielded that wonderful person that you've brought into this world. And so instead of wishing for the impossible, it's just about being present and recognizing that, yeah, there's a lot more weight on your bat that you have to swing, but swing it, you will, and your children will see it that consistency and that solidity goes a really long way. Thanks again.